All right, we're off to a fairly quiet start right now. Lots of clouds. It's kind of muggy out there. Uh, 64 degrees, 65 degrees right now at Metro, but we still have some upper 50s to the north. But overall, uh, rising into the mid 70s for a high, and we'll see an increase in shower and thunderstorm activity as we get to the late morning into and into the afternoon hours. Kim. All right, Paul, well, we've got one accident right now in Romulus. If you're traveling over on southbound I-275, the ramp to westbound I-94, that is where that accident is. The right lane is blocked. Be careful in that area. Time for a Help Me Hank alert. There's a new warning about the toy guns your children might be playing with. Three patients at a hospital in the UK were recently treated for serious eye injuries caused by guns that shoot foam bullets. All three were in pain, had blurred vision and internal bleeding in their eye. Although they all had full recoveries, experts strongly suggest that children using these toy guns should be wearing protective eyewear. Very scary. Whew. Coming up in our next half hour, stories out of Springfield Township, Livonia and Lake Orion. Also new, a warning to pet owners about a link between our beloved animals and depression. We'll get to that in a second, but right now let's check in again with Paula Tubman. Hi, good morning to you. Good morning, everyone. Working on a big story this half hour. Uh, that former physician who's accused of performing sexual mutilations on young girls is back in court today. I will explain why. Let's get you live from downtown Detroit. Local 4 News Today at 530 starts now. It's a clash of cultures as a local doctor heads back to federal court to face charges in a mutilation investigation. The shocking video shows a bus collision in New York City. Tragically, oh, there were passengers on board. And tracking a little trouble. The forecasters say rain may be on the way. Good morning. Thanks for joining us on this Tuesday. You know, that rain yesterday, I felt a difference. Today was slightly cooler. Yesterday was like a dog day. It was yeah, like it was. gray and misty and muggy and kind of depressing. And it, we just need to get to Wednesday, right, Paul? You're just going to love today then, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, about the same. It's going to be gray and muggy and yeah, all of that too. Just a better chance for rain though. That's not good for the afternoon rush hour, but it's good news in terms of the fact that we desperately need some rain around here. Metro Airport is at 65 degrees right now. Uh, in the north zone, we're in the 50s uh, right now. You're just a little further into that uh, that air mass behind the cold front that came through yesterday, and the wind is very light uh, right now. And so uh, again, all of this is ground clutter right here. We've had a few scattered showers, Lake St. Clair and to parts of Ontario. Northwest Ohio here, but really we're fairly quiet and dry right now to start the day, but back to the west. Look at this. Oh, there we go. Yeah, nice batch of rain. This is an upper level disturbance that's coming this way, and when that thing crashes into our humid air mass, yeah, it's going to generate showers and thunderstorms. The good news here is that there's nothing severe with this. This is just a good solid band of thunderstorms. Uh, the models have suggested some weakening as it gets our way, so we'll kind of keep an eye on that. But listen, we'll take any rain we can get. Let's hope this thing holds together. So dry for now and, and dry for the morning commute, but then we have showers and thunderstorms increasing during the day, 74 or so for the high. And I'll be back to talk more about Hurricane Maria and your summary weekend that's coming up. We'll do that in just a bit. But Kim, what you got on those roads? Well, we have one accident and as as Paul said, the roads are dry this morning, but you may want to grab that umbrella as you head out the door for later today. But here's let this. Let's talk about this accident over in Romulus southbound I-275. The ramp to westbound I-94. The right lane is blocked there. Be careful of that. Now we've got to talk about some construction over on the northbound lanes of the lodge right at Evergreen. One lane blocked there today, 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Also on the southbound lanes of the lodge, the ramp to Grand River will be closed 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. today tomorrow and Thursday as well. So keep that one in mind. We also have construction to talk about over on I-75. I'll tell you all about that and how to get around it coming up at 544. Back to you. Thank you, Kim. We begin this half hour with a court case getting national attention. A former doctor accused of mutilating young female patients and local force Paula Tutman live on the case that some say comes down to a clash of cultures. Yeah, definitely. Okay, so here's what's going on today. Nargawala, through her attorneys, has insisted all along that she should not be detained in federal custody, that she's not a flight risk. Now, this, even though she was arrested, she was picked up at the airport. She was on her way to Kenya to visit her two daughters who are in an international school uh, overseas. Uh, even though she has surrendered her passport, there are a lot of stalwart 
um, defenders and supporters. And so prosecutors are obviously afraid that if she does get out, somehow she'll be spirited away and won't face her day in court. And that's what today's hearing is all about. Flight risk or no flight risk? That is the question being posed at a motion hearing this afternoon for Q's mutilation doctor, Jumana Nargawala. The former physician is accused of performing female circumcisions, which is against the law in this country, but still believed to be a sacred ritual for members of a small religious sect called the Dowdy Bora. The case centers around two seven-year-old girls from Minnesota. Though prosecutors believe there are untold many others, girls brought to this region to be attended by a suspected regional grand dame of the procedure, called female circumcision by some, genital mutilation by others. The doctor's attorneys, or I should say former doctor's attorneys, claim she did not mutilate her patients, simply removed a bit of mucus from the clitorises. The physician has been in federal custody for much of the year awaiting trial. She has family in parts of Africa and India and is considered a flight risk by the prosecutors. While co-defendants have won release with house arrests, she has remained detained. Today's hearing is to once again seek her freedom while she awaits trial. So all the paperwork we have says, or says, yeah, rather, that she will actually be uh, in court for this detention hearing. Again, prosecutors will fight vigorously to keep her in federal detention, really believing that she is indeed a flight risk. Uh, I do want to make one quick distinction. Uh, the question is whether or not she's a flight risk and also a danger to society. But I think the big question right here is the flight risk. Reporting live, Paula Tutman, Local 4. Time now is 534, and the Detroit man who was wrongfully imprisoned for nearly nine years is filing a civil suit against the city of Detroit and two officers. Devontae Sanford was just 14 years old when he was convicted for four murders at a home on Detroit's east side. An MSP investigation eventually led to Sanford's release and dismissal of all charges, but Sanford and his attorney say his arrest was a direct result of officer misconduct. According to the lawsuit, Sanford has a learning disability and officers made threats and false promises to force the confession. He pled guilty to the 2007 murders and but says that he was coerced into confessing by the officers and his defense attorney. An Auburn Hills man is in hot water after leading police on a high speed chase in Lake Orion. It happened Saturday just before 2 a.m. and police say Noah Erdelin was driving at least 50 in a 35 mile per hour zone. When an officer tried pulling him over, he sped off. The officer went after Ardalan and clocked him at 110 miles an hour. Police eventually caught up to him and he failed sobriety tests. He blew a .23. Ardalan is charged with fleeing a police officer and his third offense of driving while intoxicated. He's due in court next month. A Livonia mother has been charged with manslaughter in the death of her infant son. The child died back in December, but months of investigations have led to former, former, formal charges for 32-year-old Leslie Newman. She's charged with second-degree child abuse and involuntary manslaughter. A family golf outing ends in gunfire after an argument over beer cans. It happened Saturday afternoon. They were finishing up their round. One family member decided they wanted to take the empty beer cans home. That's when a course employee accused them of stealing property. Things escalated quickly and the employee pulled out a gun and fired a shot. In the face of danger, both Carl and Stephanie Golding could only think of saving and protecting their family. Save my husband. Save my family. My daughter's behind me. My husband's behind me. Well, other family members managed to take the guy down and wrestle the gun away. Police took the shooter to the hospital before transporting him to the Oakland County Jail. Mexico's former president was in Detroit last night making an appearance at Wayne State University. He was the keynote speaker at the Forum on Contemporary Issues in Society. And in the speech, he touched on what he believes are the benefits of a strong relationship between the U.S. and Mexico. The plan is not to take away jobs from this nation. On the contrary, is to be a solid partner of this nation. And this is where NAFTA comes to being. 
Talk of renegotiating NAFTA has been a big topic of discussion. Before his speech, Fox criticized President Trump, accusing him of being confrontational and offensive to world leaders. Well, the end is near. No, really, just ahead why some say you shouldn't make plans beyond this Saturday. Really? This I, Saturday? I read all about this yesterday. It's oh, fascinating. All right. Well, after the break, a good health alert about pets and depression. Yeah. Oh, New at five. Every child will face setbacks in their life, and you play a big role in how they handle those challenges, how you can set them up for success tonight at five. Two senior Navy officers have been fired due to their connection with a series of collisions involving U.S. ships. Rear Admiral Charles Williams and Captain Jeffrey Bennett were relieved of their duties on Monday. The Pentagon said the firing was due to a loss of confidence in their ability to command. In total, four U.S. warships have either had collisions or ran aground in the Pacific so far this year. The latest two involved the USS Fitzgerald and the USS John McCain. Both collided with ships nearly double their size. A combined 17 sailors lost their lives. Defense Secretary James Mattis says he's confident in how the Navy is examining those mistakes. Time now is 542 and in St. Louis, protesters gathered for a fourth night to protest the acquittal of former police officer Jason Stockley. Monday night's protest lasted for just over two hours before organizers ended the demonstration and said protests will resume today. Now protests began Friday after Judge Timothy Wilson acquitted Stockley, who was charged in the 2011 killing of Anthony Lamar Smith. Prosecutor said Stockley allegedly planted a gun on him. Wilson said there was no evidence to support that claim. More than 140 people have been arrested since the protests began. <laughs> Meanwhile, a protest was held on the campus of Georgia Tech following a vigil for a student killed by campus police over the weekend. The university sent out an alert to students urging them to stay in a secure location. Saturday night, campus police shot and killed Schultz after they received a call reporting a suspicious person carrying a knife and a gun. They say Schultz was walking toward them and ignored their commands. In good health, kind of a bummer here, something maybe you haven't thought about. Caring for a sick pet may be emotionally taxing on the owner. Researchers from Kent State found owners of chronically ill animals were more likely to have depression and anxiety than those with healthy pets. This higher burden also impaired caregivers' quality of life and ability to function. I never thought about that before. Yeah. We are following breaking developments on the path of Hurricane Maria. Just days after Hurricane Irma tore through the Caribbean, now another monster hurricane has its sights set on Puerto Rico. The government here has declared a state of emergency, preparing hundreds of shelters to house potentially more than 100,000 evacuees. Tens of thousands of people are still in the dark. There's a rush on supplies. I'm Gabe Gutierrez in San Juan, and we'll have the very latest on this developing story coming up on today. And we will continue with the Maria theme right now. Here's the latest satellite uh, composite here. We don't have radar from the islands here, so it's just satellite. And you can see this well-defined pinhole eye. When you see that, you know you have a very well-defined system. Now moving away from Dominica. And by the way, north of Dominica is uh, an island, Guadeloupe. And they were on the right side of that eye wall. They got hammered and likely suffered devastating damage as well. So as far as the path is concerned, as far as the current statistics, so here we go. It's a Category 5 storm again. 160 mile per hour winds. So here's the storm. It's going to take a path to the northwest. And we've been telling you all morning, we have St. Croix, St. Kitts, the U.S. and British Virgin Islands here, the eastern part of Puerto Rico, which includes San Juan itself, all potentially directly in the path of the storm. And this is a Wednesday event for these areas here. Things are going to go rapidly downhill through the day tomorrow. So this is something we're going to keep a close eye on. And here's the wind field. The orange is Hurricane.
hurricane force wind and you can see how that bullseye here just right over again those islands I just mentioned in the eastern part of Puerto Rico. So this is a hit now beyond Puerto Rico. All the models are taking this thing to the north and while it's too early to say in terms of US impact right now I've looked at the long range models. They suggest at least a recurvature where it wouldn't hit the US mainland, but that's way far out and we're not going to get anything specific in terms of a forecast. We're not going to pass that along to you until we have better confidence. Hurricane Jose, by the way, is just it's a minimal hurricane and this thing is going to stay offshore. Maybe they get some tropical storm conditions right in the Cape here, eastern Massachusetts, but that thing at least is not going to be as much trouble. 65 at Metro here as we start off on a quiet note on your Tuesday morning, 57 in Howell, 59 in Lapeer, 65 over in Monroe. And again, we're quiet right now with lots of clouds, but here comes some rain and boy, do we need some rain. Uh, hopefully this will hold together and give us a nice soaker. We're not going to get inches of rain, but Boy, I'd take at this point, I'd take a half an inch or something. But uh, in any event, the model shows pretty well. You can see scattered showers and storms through the day, just kind of moving up from the south. And so there'll be parts of the day where maybe it stops raining, but we're going to have the threat all day long. And again, let's just hope that unlike yesterday, we can kind of hold that together and give us maybe a widespread soaking rain across the area. So 74 for the high today as the showers and storms increase. And if you like summer, this week is your week. Low 80s tomorrow, then into the low to mid 80s on Thursday and mid 80s all the way through the weekend. Looks like not a drop of rain, perhaps from Wednesday all the way through next, actually Tuesday, Kim. So uh, get ready for some summer. I hope you didn't close the pool yet. <laughs> <laughs> if I only had a pool, that's Jason Carr. <laughs> called out. All right, well, let's take a look at what's going on. We have good news that accident over on I-275 has cleared. So now we're just talking about some construction over in Detroit. East and westbound Jefferson from Griswold to St. Antoine, Antoine is a one lane block there. That's a hard one to say. <laughs> one lane block there until three o'clock today. So keep that in mind. Also, north and southbound I-75 between Clay and I-94, one lane block there, 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Southbound I-275 will have construction as well right at Van Born one lane block there. This will be happening between 9 a.m. and 3 p.m. as well. And if you're headed out the door soon towards I-75 stick around. We'll take a look at that commute coming up at 554 back to you. All right, thank you, Kim. Well, time now for some stories you may have missed. Mm, good news on the billion dollar I-75 project in Oakland Township. The plans to rebuild and widen I-75 to four lanes from Ferndale to Pontiac will now be completed by 2022, and that's 10 years earlier than originally planned. The new end date is due to a new private funding plan that will get the work done even quicker. Wow. Oh, they knew it was going to be 2022 <laughs> all along. They just wanted to set us up so that it was down the line. Wow, 2022, though, still seems too far away. Christian researcher John Mead says the rapture will take place this Saturday, 33 days after last month's eclipse. And the rapture is an event where Christians claim Jesus Christ will return to Earth. Mead says the rapture won't be the end of the Earth, but just the end as we know it. He goes on to say the event will be caused by a secret plant called Nibiru that will pass Earth on Saturday. I read a whole magazine article about this yesterday uh -huh. on one of the websites, and uh, it is some unusual um, prognosticating. Let's yeah, put it that I way. Could, that's a good way to put it. All right, we'll leave it there. <laughs> it could be one of the most unusual real estate listings we've heard about, and it might be perfect for someone looking to live happily ever after. This home for sale in the Seattle area is a fairy tale come true. It's a cottage inspired by the story of Snow White. The four bedroom cottage is on a five wooded acres and has a listing price of $775,000. But does it come with seven dwarfs? Uh, you got, how about, you how about got seven there right before gnomes? me. Great garden minds. gnomes? Yeah, there you go. We could have seven garden gnomes. Yeah, find this place on Travelocity, apparently. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, Just there four, you go. <laughs> four days left to enter this year's Film Challenge Detroit and win a trip to the Sundance Film Festival plus $1,000. To enter, you can head over to FilmChallengeDetroit.com and upload your 5 to 15 minute film fitting the theme Good versus Evil. Take a look at one of the submissions we've received. What up, dog? Who you looking for? Looking for you, dog. Ain't you Marco? Yeah. Who is you? And what you want from me? I'm Snake, man. You need to come get this work, homie. Nah, I'm tight, dog. Come on, man. I can look at you and tell you ain't getting no paper. Come on, get some of this work, man. You rocking them knockoffs and whatnot. Hey, these may be knockoffs, but I still see I ain't gonna be a fool in the road with you. 
All right. Yeah, that was interesting. That was the greatest gift submitted by Dwayne Wilkerson. So get those submissions in. You know, that's authentic when it starts with the dialogue starts with what up, Doe? I know, right? <laughs> what up, Doe? Starting today, drivers across Oakland County need to be on their best behavior. And out of control, a deadly bus collision caught on tape. On the next Live in the D. The new creations in the D attracting international attention. Plus, we are whipping up perfect drinks for fall. Today at 10 on Local 4. Tonight at 10. All right, if you're up early and you're going to be getting the kids ready to head out to the bus stop in an hour or two, here's what we're looking at. Uh, low 60s to start the day should be uh, cloudy but uh, dry for the morning bus stop. And keep in mind, it's going to be kind of humid all day, so probably shorts and t-shirts is going to work well. Uh, 74 for the high, better chance for showers and thunderstorms this afternoon. Not everybody necessarily getting one at any one particular time, but we have a better chance than what we had yesterday. Now, if you're heading to the Tiger game tonight, we still have some shower possibilities, at least during the first uh, part of the game and then things do diminish uh, later on. Hopefully we uh, don't have enough to cause delays, but uh, that is a possibility. So we'll watch it for you. Uh, 74 for the start of the game. Looks like we fall into the upper 60s by the end of the game. And uh, we've been telling you all week long, if you like summer, you're going to love this forecast. Fall officially begins Friday at 4.02 in the afternoon. And look at this. After today, we're in the 80s all the way through the weekend into early next week. In fact, Kim, I don't see cooling back to average temperatures until we get to the middle of next week. Wow, amazing. Okay, well, here's a look at your commute this morning. This is I-75 right at 8 Mile, and you can see that things are looking good in this area. Dry roads to start off the day, and we had a couple of accidents this morning, but they are all clear. We are accident-free right now. Scary new video out of New York this morning. Security video shows a charter bus slamming into a New York City bus. It happened early Monday morning in Queens. You can see that the impact pushed the charter bus into the side of a restaurant. A pedestrian and a passenger on the city bus were killed, as well as the driver of that charter bus. 16 others taken to local hospitals for injuries. The charter bus speedometer was photographed at the scene, stuck at 60 miles an hour. The cause of the crash is still under investigation. Time now is 5.55, and today the Auburn Hills Police Department begins a crackdown on distracted driving enforcement. Thousands of people die in distracted driving crashes every year, and many emergency responders or record workers are hurt when drivers fail to move one lane over from a stationary vehicle on the shoulder. While the Auburn Hills PD, as well as the Oakland County Sheriff's Department, will be stepping up enforcement of both of those today. And it's not too late to see Kid Rock at uh, Little Caesars Arena. He has two more shows today and tomorrow. Tickets available both days. The Wings will take the ice at the LCA for the first preseason home game on Saturday. Well, the summer-long search for a million-dollar act is coming to an end. The season finale of America's Got Talent begins here on Local 4 tonight. And tomorrow night, the fate of one act will be decided by America's vote. It's really good. It's going to be like genius or why are you that dumb? <laughs> All of the remaining acts will perform and show America just how talented they are. For one act, it'll be a million dollar performance. I love that show. Yeah, you and my daughter. Ugh. Nuts over. I have to DVR at that and uh, American Ninja Warrior, too. I like that show, too. Yeah. Jesse Graff. Coming up all new at 6, local stories out of Frasier, Royal Oak, and Detroit. Plus, are you addicted to pumpkin spice like I am? The reason behind the seasonal craze. And a lot can happen on live TV. Last night, this newscast was rocking. We'll explain why. We're back in a minute. Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News Today at 6 starts now. Voted out. Frazier's mayor and a city councilman kicked out of office over allegations of inappropriate touching and vulgar behavior. Ahead, why this may be just the beginning. Plus, tearing through the Caribbean and now Hurricane Maria has its sights set on Puerto Rico and maybe the most powerful storm the U.S. territory has seen in years. We're tracking it this morning. And still undefeated, the Detroit Lions, your Detroit Lions, showing up big in primetime with a big victory over the New York Giants. Go Lions! 
<laughs> you need, yeah, you need the hard hat I and do. the microphone. <laughs> she needs to be over there at Ford Field. Good morning and thank you for joining us. I'm Jason Carr. And I'm Priya Mann. We're in for Rhonda and Everod this morning. And Paul is in for Brandon. So uh, we like to think of ourselves as being a separate team, not necessarily the B team. <laughs> Man, I tell you, there's so many ways I can go with that. But uh, let's talk about what's going on right now. It, it is a quiet start to the day. It's muggy, it's cloudy, but at least there's no uh, rain in the area right now to speak of. 65 in Dearborn right now. Metro's at 64. Dundee, you're at 63. Manchester, you're at 63 as well. You see a pretty common theme here across the south. A little bit cooler as you head to the north. Uh, 61 in Pontiac, 61 in Romeo. Emmett, you're at 57. Uh, still 64 in the Blue Water area there. Port Huron, 57 though in Holly. And Marlette, you're checking in at 58 degrees. So as I mentioned, no rain in the area. This is all ground clutter right here, but back to the west. There is a line of showers and thunderstorms. It is weakening. The models did suggest it was going to weaken as it approached, so we're not looking at severe weather, but boy, it'd be nice to get that rain in here to give us some rain. We, we are so dry right now. We could use the rain. High temperature, 74 degrees with showers and a few thunderstorms increasing through the day. I'll be back with more on the forecast for the week ahead and the latest on Maria in just a moment. Right now, we'll send it over to Kim with a look at those roads. All right, Paul, I know you say we need the rain, but we certainly love dry roads in the morning. Here's a look at your commute over on Southfield freeway right at Grand River and you can see that conditions looking fantastic to start off the day. We have no accidents to report about at this time, so that is some good news. However, we've got to let you know about a Fort Street closure. I'll tell you all about it and how to get around it coming up in my next report at 614. Back to you. Now to breaking news from Detroit, where a popular nightclub in the city's new center was the target of thieves. Paula Tupman is there live working with police, uh, trying to find out what happened. Paula, what can you tell us? Hi, good morning to you. Good morning, everyone. First of all, I just kind of want to show you this. This is the back door of Northern Lights Lounge. It's in the new center area. It's a, it's a bit of a hybrid. It's a restaurant during the day offering nightlife at night. Its website says it closes at 2 a.m. So I want to show you some video that we shot just a short time ago. This is around 4 a.m. this morning. Police were called to this location. It's off of Baltimore Street. As I said, you're looking at the back door of this. While this looks like a break-in on the outside, it really does have the feel of something bigger. An employee does tell me that there was definitely a break-in, that a theft did occur, that there have been crime scene investigators in there all morning taking photographs and fingerprints on numerous surfaces. We also know that surveillance tape is being reviewed. When we arrived, there was a great deal of police activity, including the presence of undercover officers. Now, the man I'm told is the owner of the establishment. When I talked to him, he actually denied there was a break in at all, even though even though we were standing in front of a broken door and he was talking to police officers. But I certainly understand that this must be very traumatic. Nobody wants to see a reporter this time of morning when you're working to aid police in some sort of investigation. Right now, that broken door has been boarded up and we're working our sources to connect the dots. So again, guys, while this looks like just, uh, listen, there is no such thing as an ordinary break-in, but while it looks like a break-in, it really does have the feel of something more. And as I said, we're working our sources to continue connecting the dots for you this morning. Back to you. All right, thank you, Paula. Paula Tupman reporting live for us this morning. Well, a 58-year-old man is in critical condition after he was hit by a train on Detroit's east side. The man was riding his bike in the area of Van Dyke and East McNichols when he fell onto the tracks. He was then hit by a train and dragged 20 feet before the train was able to stop. Time now is 6.03 and the Fraser City Council has voted to remove Mayor Joseph Nichols and Councilman Matthew Hemmelberg. This is due to sexual harassment allegations made by employees at Fraser City Hall. Removal of an elected official is serious and typically is only done by a sitting governor in extreme cases. However, the City Council decided to take matters into its own hands. They hired an outside attorney to conduct an investigation and got an earful. I saw Mr. Hemmelberg uh, massaging the shoulders of the librarian. It was a kangaroo court. The reality is in there that we didn't get due process. While the vote may be over, the men say a legal challenge is forthcoming. As of now, we do not know what form that will be, what shape that will take, but we'll keep you updated on air and, of course, on clickondetroit.com. Hurricane Maria is churning in the Atlantic and heading toward Puerto Rico this morning after barreling through the island of Dominica. Let's send it over to Paul Gross, who's tracking this dangerous storm. Good morning, Paul. Yeah, this is a worst case scenario. I mean, there, there are times where you ha kind of have a near miss. So this is a worst case scenario. Take a look. This storm went right 
over the island there. And this is a really a bad scenario. It was a category five storm. And then just north of Dominica is the island of Guadalupe. And that was on the right hand eye wall. So they just had tremendous uh, impact from the storm as well. In fact, those of you who follow me on Twitter, I just tweeted out video showing the storm as it hit Guadalupe. Now, the devastation that hit the island of Dominica is just terrible. You can see the wind and rain kind of whipping through here. I know it's nighttime video, kind of hard to see. So once daylight comes, uh, we're going to see uh, maybe more of this damage. But the prime minister of the island says that he Facebook message last night that his roof came off his house. and He said, I'm just at the mercy of the storm. He was rescued, but this is going to be a really bad scenario. And we're going to just have to wait for daylight to see how bad it was, guys. All right, thank you, Paul. Today, for the first time, President Trump will address the United Nations, something he criticized during his campaign, and that criticism may carry over into his speech today. Reform, and reform is what we're talking about. President Trump is expected to walk a fine line later this morning, urging nations to solve problems together, North Korea, Iran, and Mideast peace. I really think we have a chance. While chiding the UN for being inefficient. The United Nations has not reached its full potential because of bureaucracy and mismanagement. Sending a clear message, other countries need to kick in more cash. We must ensure that no one and no member state shoulders a disproportionate share of the burden and that's militarily or financially. Amid heavy security, President Trump is already making the rounds with Israel, France and a phone call with China's president. We discussed uh, uh, trade and we also discussed a place called North Korea. Today he'll explain how his America first philosophy doesn't leave everyone else out. But he is going to have to decide whether he finds a way to get back into the Paris climate change pact and he's going to have to decide whether he actually pulls out of the Iran nuclear deal. And North Korea nations united the key to avoiding a military conflict. And new information this morning shows U.S. investigators wiretapped former Trump campaign manager Paul Manafort. We've learned it was authorized under secret court orders in 2014, long before President Trump announced his candidacy and continued until early this year. Now, some of the intelligence collected includes communications that Manafort had encouraged Russian involvement with the Trump campaign. It's not known if President Trump was picked up on the surveillance. Manafort has denied knowingly communicating with Russian intelligence operatives during the election. Jason. The Lions bring home another victory after beating the Giants 24 to 10. They are now 2 and 0 on the season. The Lions started the scoring with a 27 yard touchdown pass to Marvin Jones Jr. Then in the second, a second touchdown pass from Stafford. This uh, time to Eric Ebron. We've got the, the uh, punt return here that we're showing. The Lions looking good in all aspects of the game. They even got some uh, luck at 58 yard field goal from Matt Prater as they go on to become one of only three teams with the 2-0 record. That was 88 yards on that uh, punt return, by the way. Lions defense, the star of the game, as it dominated from start to finish. Take a listen. Ingram, and obviously everybody knows what uh, uh, what the rest of the crew can do, um, Beckham and uh, Eli and the rest of that group. So you know, anytime you can get pressure on him, it's a good thing. The team we were playing uh, was a good football team, um, playoff caliber football team with a great defense and, and talented offense. So um, anytime you can go on the road in this league, um, play a team like that and get a win in a tough environment, um, it's, it's a good thing. And here's the hit. Ooh, bad news from the win. First round draft pick starting linebacker Jared Davis is now undergoing concussion protocol after a cheap shot from Odell Beckham Jr., who was uh, questionable to play to begin with himself because of injury. So from our Facebook page, some of your reaction to last night's primetime win. We have five comments to show you here. Impressive win, says Chris. Boom, Lions are for real, I think. <laughs> Kathy says they actually played four solid quarters. I was pleasantly amazed. Not surprised, but uh, pleasantly <laughs> amazed. Can somebody actually be pleasantly amazed? Adam says, I have got to be living in an alternate reality. No way the Lions are 2-0. What wizardry, wizardry is behind this witchcraft? And Mark says, start mixing up more Kool-Aid. We've got it right here. Hang on a second. Don't go anywhere. I'll be right back. We have it right here. Stay there. I'm coming back, I promise. <laughs> There it is, the Lions Kool-Aid right there made once upon a time by Steve Garagiola. It says, the great teams find a way to win. 
on the little tag right there. It's unopened as well. <laughs> Well played, Priya Man. <laughs> well played. Back to you. All right, thanks, Jason. Coming up, a consumer alert. The cost of salmon is going up, and the reason why may have you rethinking seafood. Plus, more fallout surrounding the Equifax hack. The credit company now in the midst of a scandal. What top executives are accused of doing? We'll be back in a minute. It's four. Back, Paul, it's been a very busy couple of days for you tracking these number of storms. Um, the latest one has just been downgraded to a category four, but still has the potential for a lot of damage here. It was briefly downgraded to a four, then it came just back up to a five. Now, okay. I believe that's all new. So, yeah, this is it's it's I'm not, I don't scare easily, but this is just frightening. Take a look. This is the eye of a category category five hurricane going right over the island of Dominica and uh, the, the devastation is just going to be catastrophic but not to be nobody's talking about Guadeloupe which is the island here to the north but watch this real quick the right side of the eye wall which is the most devastating part of a hurricane goes right over the southern part of the island there so this is going to be an area of particular devastation as well now as you broaden out the view you can see this is a, this is a, a typical sized hurricane it's not as big as Irma was for example this is more of a typical sized hurricane and it's moving to the northwest and this path is going to take it right at Puerto Rico so it's going to strengthen to a, between these two points here. It's going to strengthen to a five here. Stay as a five and either hit as a category five or a high end category four storm. And keep in mind, you've got St. Croix, St. Kitts, the Virgin Islands and San Juan all potentially looking at a direct hit from this storm. So we'll keep track of it and of course keep you posted both here and on clickondetroit.com. All right. Low to mid 60s across most of the area with a very light wind right now. Uh, north of M59, we still have some 50s, but it's, it's a humid morning, so it doesn't feel chilly out when you head out. We have some showers and thunderstorms to the southwest. Hopefully those are going to hold together and give us at least a chance at a soaking rain. We didn't, most of us didn't get any of that yesterday. We had one shower in Monroe County yesterday afternoon that kind of stayed in the same place and some of you got it, but the rest of us really didn't get a whole lot. So here you see progressing through the day, just chances of showers and storms, little batches coming through. And again, hopefully we get some meaningful rain out of this because we have quite a rain deficit right now. So we'll just kind of track that on radar through the day. You can track it yourself on our app, by the way. And by the way, our app has a great hurricane layer. You can can see everything you need about the hurricane on that. All right, 74 for the high as the showers and thunderstorms increase through the day. And then once we get past today, it's not only back to the 80s, but how about back to the mid 80s all the way through the weekend, all the way into early next week. And it looks like no rain from Wednesday all the way through next Tuesday, the way things are looking right now. All right, here's our Hanson's weather window from our downtown sky cam looking up Woodward Avenue there. There you see Comerica Park to the right. Uh, just a gorgeous shot and a quiet morning right now. But Kim, the rain will be coming uh, just a little bit later this morning into the early afternoon. All right, Paul, well, I think I can handle it because that future forecast looks like a good one for us. Now let's take a look at what's going on on our roads this morning. No accidents to talk about at this time, so that is some good news. However, we want to let you know about some construction. Now the westbound lanes of 8 Mile, though that has been closed at that I-75 overpass, but that's going to be reopening today around 9 a.m. But keep this in mind, eastbound lanes of 8 Mile right at the I-75 overpass, that will be closing at 9 a.m. And that's going to remain closed for construction until the middle of October. So in order to get around that, you can use the service drive of I-75 that will help you get around that use that as a detour. Now let's take a look at something else you need to worry about over. Um, this is uh, I 75 right at 12 mile here. This is our 1 800 call Sam chopper shot. Keep this in mind. This is actually a OK. Nothing you need to worry about here and traffic volume starting to build, but things are looking good. Priya. All right, thank you, Kim. In today's consumer headlines, salmon prices are soaring, plus Equifax fallout, the new development surrounding the devastating hack. But first, we warned you on Monday, Toys R Us protection. Maribel Aber is live at NASDAQ.
Hey, good morning, Priya. You know, Toys R Us has filed for bankruptcy protection. The retailer expects most of its stores will remain open for the holidays. It will use $3 billion in bankruptcy financing to fund its operations. Toys R Us will now look to restructure $5 billion in debt. The chain has struggled in recent years as rivals Walmart, Target, and Amazon took over more of the uh, toy market. The Justice Department has opened a criminal investigation into stock sales made by three Equifax executives. That's according to Bloomberg News. The trio sold shares of the company just before its massive data breach was disclosed disclosed. And Bloomberg is also reporting that Equifax was hit by an earlier hacking as well. The security breach took place in March, two months before the big cyber attack. Sea lice are disrupting salmon farms around the world. The parasites are rendering large numbers of the fish unsuitable for consumers, and that's driving up prices. Wholesale salmon prices are soaring, and the pests are said to cost the industry $1 billion a year. That's according to Fish Farmer magazine. That's the latest in biz from NASDAQ. Back over to you, Priya. Oh, sea lice. Something I'd never thought of before. All right, thanks, Maribel. Yeah. Oh, I can't wait for this. Okay, all right, here, here we go. Avast ye land lovers, tis tuck like a pirate day, and Long John Silvers has an offer ye can't refuse. <laughs> and our associate producer, Dylan, really had a field day with this one. Thanks, Dylan. So I guess that makes me Jason Carr. All right, see what you did if there. If you speak the pirate lingo today, or if you dress up in real life <laughs> like the pirate-loving <laughs> scoundrel ye are, you can get the real <laughs> treasure, a golden deep-fried Twinkie. But don't wait, lest ye want to miss out. The offer is only while supplies last. I know where we're going right after this show. Yeah, <laughs> I guess that makes you Priya. Man the cannon. Oh, I like that. I was just joking. I'd probably be your parrot. Just repeat everything you say. <laughs> well, is the love of pumpkin spice actually an addiction? The research that says, yes, it is. That's coming up. Plus, kids these days, they're not growing up like they used to, uh, where experts are pointing the finger. Before we go to the break, what does a pirate's favorite letter? R. No, the C. C, oh, right. Uh, you already uh, said this joke to me. <laughs> I still got it wrong. Before we go to break, Mary Akahoshi is our Facebook friend for today. She's from Livonia. We will send you a pair of tickets to the Michigan Renaissance Festival just for being our friend for today. And if you would like to be our friend as well, just like our Facebook page, click on the Friend of the Day tab. You can be our friend. We'll X see you soon. marks the spot. Hi, matey. <laughs> Alrighty, let's get you going here on our Tuesday morning. Quiet right now. It's cloudy and it's kind of muggy out there. Uh, basically low 60s in most areas, low to mid 60s, a couple of upper 50s to the north. Uh, we'll see showers and scattered thunderstorms increase through the day. So by late morning into the afternoon, should see some rain around here. High temperature in the mid 70s and then things should gradually diminish as we move through the evening hours. Kim? All right, well, here's a look at the big picture here, but if uh, we could just move forward here, we can see that we've got a Fort Street closure to let you know about north and southbound Fort Street between Oakwood and Barker that will be closed today between 9 a.m. and 3 p.m. So to get around this one, use Dix Avenue or I-94 instead. In good health, new data this morning reveals kids are not growing up as fast as they used to. That's according to surveys of over 8 million teens from the mid-1970s until now. Teens in the 2010s are less likely to work, to drive, to date, and to drink alcohol than those in previous decades. That trend was consistent among all races, socioeconomic status, and regions of the country. Researchers say this decline may be linked to the time teens spend online. I've heard that about driving, that kids aren't getting their driver's licenses, but yeah. I'm surprised at some of the other ones. I think the big three are doing, well, not just the big three, but the car companies are doing research on how to, you know. Right. Get kids and you know motivated. It used to be such a rite of passage. Turn 16, you get that license. It's freedom. Yep. Fall is officially a few days away, but pumpkin spice has already taken over our lives. I love it. And apparently, the more you have it, what the more you crave it. Experts say the taste and smell trigger an emotional response in your brain, creating somewhat of an addiction. If you're not a fan of pumpkin spice, don't worry. Just wait a few months. Eggnog will take over. No, I do like some eggnog. I can only have very little, though. Yeah, After it is a pretty few rich. sips, yeah, it's it's a little much. Well, next at 6:30, local stories from Detroit, Livonia, and Springfield Township. Plus, busted for drunk driving, but this driver wasn't about to stop for police. What he did that led up to his arrest. But first, an earthquake during a newscast. That's next in today's yeah, top you video. Clock. 
feel that? Yeah, did you feel it? Yes, I did. Here. We just, just had, had a little earthquake. earthquake. Yes, we did. Terrifying. Los Angeles NBC affiliate KNBC was on air when the 3.6 magnitude earthquake shook the studio. Quake hit at 11:20 Pacific time around the northwestern part of LA, according to the U.S. Geological Survey. No reports of injuries or damage have been made so far. No aftershocks have been reported. We're back in a minute. On October live from downtown Detroit, local four news today at 6:30 starts now. Good morning, I'm Priya Mann. And I'm Jason Carr. Evrod and Rhonda have the day off. Thank you for joining us. Today, the local doctor accused of female genital mutilation heads back to court. Where the case stands and what's happening in the courtroom this morning. Downgraded, still powerful this morning, tracking Hurricane Maria, which is heading toward Puerto Rico. And this after it tore through the Caribbean island of Dominica. And Paul Gross will has been tracking all of this wet weather here at home. It also has the latest on this hurricane. Absolutely. First of all, we'll start with our local weather and get you out the door. It's a quiet morning. No rain in the area right now. Temperatures generally are in the low to mid 60s, so it's a warm, muggy. It's an August like morning out there, and we do have some rain chances today, so let's detail that for you. Now, this is all ground clutter right here, but if you look back to the west, there, uh, yeah, there is an area of showers and thunderstorms. Nothing severe, but it looks like it is going to hold together as it moves toward us, and we could really use a soaking rain. It's very, very dry out there. We're very close to drought conditions right now uh, abnormally dry in many parts of the area. So moving through the day, we're starting off again in the mid 60s and rise up to about low 70s, mid 70s or so for a high with the showers and thunderstorms increasing. So let's now talk about the hurricane. This is Maria. Now what I want to do, I'm going to put an X right here. This is Dominica. That's the island there. The I went right over the island and this right here is Guadalupe to the north. And what I want you to remember is with this storm, you have a circulation that is counterclockwise and the strongest wind with any hurricane is on the right side of that storm because that wind is moving in the same direction that the storm is moving. So the island of Guadalupe also had a very severe hit as it was in that right hand eye wall. Here's just the wider view. Up here is the next target, and this is really bad news. The storm right now, 160 miles per hour. This is a category five storm, and take a look. Category four or five storm as it heads into St. Croix, St. Kitts, the Virgin Islands, and Puerto Rico. Now this is the cone of uncertainty right here, so it's still there's a bit of wiggle room in the path, but we are looking at the potential for a category either high end four or a five storm with a direct hit on Puerto Rico. Be more uh, have more on our weather, including a very summery weekend ahead in just a little bit, guys. Thank you, Paul, for the latest developments and whereabouts of Hurricane Maria. Head to ClickOnDetroit.com. We'll give up to the minute updates on there. And Kim DiGiulio joining us now. We were talking about a few accidents early this morning, but things have started to clear up, right? Yeah, it was kind of crazy. We have great conditions out yeah. there, but earlier this morning we had three accidents. Luckily, we're not dealing with that right now, so that's good news. But we do want to take a look at the big picture here, as you can see from our maps. We are looking good out there. Lots of green on our maps, which is always a great way to start off the morning. But let's zoom in to construction. We've got construction over on the eastbound side of I-696. I-75 to DeQuinder, that's where you will see those orange barrels out. One lane block there at 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. This is going to be a daily project and that's going to continue until September 29th. Also, we've got construction on the westbound lanes of I-696 between Evergreen and Greenfield. One lane block there at 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. and this is going to continue those 12 hours all the way until October 2nd. So keep that in mind as well. Back to you. The other big story this half hour besides the hurricane, a former doctor accused of performing controversial procedures on young girls heads to court. And the controversy is over what's called female genital mutilation. Local 4's Paula Tutman is live to explain. Good morning, Paula. Hi, good morning to you both. Good morning, everyone. You may remember that Nagawala was actually picked up at the airport. She was on her way to Kenya to visit her daughters who are in an international school overseas. She has surrendered her passport. So she says she is not a flight risk. Now, this is even though she's very stalwart supporters who believe she did nothing wrong. Prosecutors, however, believe that she has been like the go-to for this religious sect for what they call female mutilation. They say she's a flight risk. She says she's not. 
Flight risk or no flight risk? That is the question being posed at a motion hearing this afternoon for Q's mutilation doctor, Jumana Nargawala. The former physician is accused of performing female circumcisions, which is against the law in this country, but still believed to be a sacred ritual for members of a small religious sect called the Dowdy Bora. The case centers around two seven-year-old girls from Minnesota. Though prosecutors believe there are untold many others. Girls brought to this region to be attended by a suspected regional grand dame of the procedure. Called female circumcision by some, genital mutilation by others. The doctor's attorneys, or I should say former doctor's attorneys, claim she did not mutilate her patients, simply removed a bit of mucus from the clitorises. The physician has been in federal custody for much of the year awaiting trial. She has family in parts of Africa and India and is considered a flight risk by the prosecutors. While co-defendants have won release with house arrests, she has remained detained. Today's hearing is to once again seek her freedom while she awaits trial. Now, these charges can rack up some pretty, pretty hefty penalties if she is indeed convicted, again, she'll be in court today at 11, trying to win her freedom while she awaits her actual trial. Guys, back to you. All right, thank you, Paula. Paula Tutman reporting for us live this morning. Now for some stories making headlines across Metro Detroit. We'll take a look at Springfield Township, Lake Orion, and Royal Oak, but we start in Livonia. And that's where a mother has been charged with manslaughter in the death of her infant son. The child died back in December, but after a months long investigation, 32 year old Leslie Newman was formally charged on Monday and she was charged with involuntary manslaughter and second degree child abuse. In Royal Oak, they're on high alert after several acts of vandalism occurred over the weekend. Police were called after neighbors found a swastika and the phrase white power spray painted onto a garage. At least six other residents filed police reports. If you have any information, please contact Royal Oak Police. And in Springfield Township, a family golf outing ends in gunfire after an argument over beer cans. It happened Saturday afternoon. They were finishing up their game and one family member decided they wanted to take the empty beer cans home. That's when a course employee accused them of stealing property. Things escalated and the employee pulled out a gun and fired a shot. Saved by husband. Saved my family. My daughter's behind me, my husband's behind me. Other family members managed to take the guy down and wrestle the gun away. Police took the shooter to the hospital before transporting him to the Oakland County Jail. An Auburn Hills man pictured here is charged with dri driving drunk and leading police on a high speed chase in Lake Orion. It happened Saturday just before 2 a.m. Police eventually caught up to him after the 110 mile per hour chase. He failed sobriety tests blowing a .23. This guy is charged with fleeing a police officer. His third offense of driving while intoxicated. He is back in court next month. Noah Ardalan. Hand trimmed, wood smoked, kid tested, family approved. Coming up in Tasty Tuesday, something the, this little shack calls craft barbecue. Mmm, smells good. Plus, famous and dangerous. The celebrities you should avoid looking up online and that list may surprise you. Sky Forge. A protest on Georgia Tech University's campus turned violent following a vigil for a student killed by campus police over the weekend. The university issued an emergency alert shortly after a peaceful candlelight vigil took place in memory of 21-year-old Scout Schultz. During the protest, a police vehicle was set on fire and two officers suffered minor injuries. Officials say three people were arrested and charged with inciting a riot and battery of an officer. And protesters have gathered for a fourth night in St. Louis as protests grow increasingly violent. Over 100 arrests have been made so far. Now, the initial demonstrations broke out after Judge Timothy Wilson acquitted former police officer Jason Stockley, who was charged in the 2011 killing of Anthony Lamar Smith. Several officers have been injured as debris was thrown at them by protesters. Scary video out of New York this morning. Security video shows a charter bus slamming into a New York City bus. It happened early Monday morning in Queens. You can see that the impact pushed the bus right there 
into the side of a restaurant. A pedestrian and a passenger on the city bus were killed, as well as the driver of the charter bus. 16 others taken to local hospitals for injuries. The charter bus speedometer was stuck at 60 miles an hour. The cause of the crash is still under investigation. Stunning video there. If you don't want to infect your computer or laptop, well, you'll want to take precautions when searching for certain celebrities online. All of these surprise me. Security company McAfee has announced its 11th annual list of most dangerous celebrities to search online, and topping the list is Avril Lavigne. Well, second is Bruno Mars. Also on the list are Carly Rae Jepsen and Zayn Malik. Others to watch out for are Celine Dion, Calvin Harris, and Justin Bieber. McAfee says searches for these famous names are most likely to land consumers on websites that carry viruses or malware. I noticed a lot of Canadians on that. I was going to say there's there seem to be an it's like all Canadians. amount. I know. Hmm. Who knew that was a trick to getting your a virus on your computer? So what you got over there, uh, what's your big prediction for this weekend, Kim? Uh, you correctly called the Lions win over the Giants. I did, didn't I? And look, I wore my Honolulu blue today. There you go. <laughs> Ish, kind of. Close enough. <laughs> Close enough. But yeah, what a game last night. That was something that I had to sleep through it. But, uh, <laughs> but boy, what a, what a great win. On the road is always tough. And then mm -hmm. playing a good New York Giants team, that's even better. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, we definitely have a lot of weather to talk about. We do. And I want to give you some perspective as we talk about Hurricane Maria. Now, we've all seen a line of severe storms come through our area with 50 to 60 to 70 mile per hour wind gusts. And you know, you know that brings down power lines and tree limbs and things like that. Now I want you to imagine wind twice that strength, but lasting for hours instead of for like 20 seconds. That's what they dealt with here with this uh, category five hurricane coming right over, just right over the island, island of Dominica. And, and the, again, the right side of that eye wall hit Guadalupe, so there's se severe, devastating damage up there as well. Nobody's talking about Guadalupe. They're all talking about Dominica, but this is going to be another ca catastrophic area of damage as well. And now uh, we're just watching this thing progress to the northwest, and you see all these little dots here? Yeah, these are very important islands here, too. We have well-known ones, St. Croix and uh, uh, the Virgin Islands, U.S. and British Virgin Islands, and St. Kitts, and we have, of course, Puerto Rico there. And the path right now for this storm, which is back to Category 5 status, it dropped briefly, and then it's back to Category 5 status with 160 mile per hour winds. The path is right at those islands. It's going to hit either as a category five or a very high end category four storm. And the timing is Wednesday. Wednesday is the day. And the reason that one of the reasons that this is going to maintain its strength are the water temperatures. Look at this. This is bath water mid 80s water temperatures out here. So you take a low wind shear environment, which it's in and you put it over these uh, these bathwater ocean temperatures and you just have all the ingredients there for a hurricane to strengthen and maintain its uh, very strong strength. So low to mid 60s to start the day as we have a quieter weather picture here. Of course, it's muggy out there and the wind is very light and uh, it's dry. At least we have clouds, but at least a dry start to the day. That's good news for the morning rush. But this area of showers and storms coming across with much needed rainfall. So right now plan on a wet afternoon drive home, although the activity by then will be more scattered. Not everybody necessarily getting it. In fact, you can see that here on the model. You can see how this wave uh, just kind of increases uh, rain chances by late morning into the afternoon hours. And again, it kind of starts to diminish a bit as we get into the evening hours, but there still could be some issues for the Tiger game tonight. So if you're heading down there, bring the poncho and the umbrella. So 74 for the high as the showers and storms increase. But then after today, not only do things quiet down and the sun starts coming out again, but it's going to heat up again. So low 80s tomorrow. 83 degrees on Thursday, and then it is mid 80s on Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, even next Tuesday. The humidity up there, overnight lows in the mid 60s. It's just going to be a scorcher as we head into this uh, beginning of fall. Fall begins at 4.02 Friday afternoon, Kim. Yeah, it looks like fall wants to be kind of summery. No complaints on my end. I know a lot of people like fall, but I want summer to hold on. All right, well, let's take a look at what's going on. No accidents to report about at this time. However, I do want to let you know about westbound 8 Mile. That has been closed right at the I-75 overpass. It's going to be reopening today at 9 a.m., but keep this in mind. The eastbound side of 8 Mile right at that same area, that will close at 9 a.m., and that's going to remain closed for construction until the middle of October. And so to get around that, you can use the service drive of I-75 
of there that'll help you avoid that. Also, we want to let you know about Fort Street construction, the north and southbound Fort Street. Uh, that is the Fort Street Bridge between Oakwood and Miller. That will be closed today between 9 a.m. and 3 p.m. So you can use I-94 or Dix Avenue to get around this closure. We also want to take a look right now with our 1-800 call Sam Chopper shot. We're looking down at Southfield Freeway right at Ford Road. It's getting a little busier out there, but again, the morning conditions are just great. We don't have any rain to worry about at this time. However, don't forget to grab that umbrella. Paul is saying that we could have some rain a little bit later today. Back to you. All right, thanks, Kim. Well, only four days left to enter Film Challenge Detroit and win a trip to the Sundance Film Festival and $1,000. To enter, head on over to FilmChallengeDetroit.com and upload your 5 to 15 minute film. Fitting the theme Good versus Evil, here's a look at one of the submissions we received. <laughs> All right, that was the Morrigan submitted by Caitlin Robakiewicz. Remember, deadline is Friday, so you still have to film something on your phone. You have time. You can do it. You know, you can do a whole movie on your iPhone. I know you can. You can edit it and all of it. And submit it. Kim's taking the place of Brandon today, by the way, for Tasty Tuesday. That is right. Well, guys, it may not seem like it right now, but sadly, summer is coming to an end, which means less chances to get outside and fire up that grill for a barbecue. However, you are in luck because we found a barbecue spot in Clawson that is smoking fresh meats and cooking up some delicious sides all year long. It's a real labor of love at Woodpile Barbecue Shack in Clawson. Pitmaster Ryan Loisel turned his open air rib and chicken joint into a craft barbecue. I wake up at five in the morning, get here, and uh, get to do what I love every single day. As a craft barbecue, Woodpile makes its own rubs for the brisket, trims its ribs by hand, and smokes everything in-house. We have a feast for four, which is a whole chicken, a whole slab of ribs, a couple sides. The pitmaster is a family man and knows his barbecue is best because his picky eating five-year-old son is his biggest critic. Dad, you do good barbecue. Thanks, buddy. And that's, you know, that's one of the things that keeps me going. Woodpile Barbecue matches its craft with craft beers and cocktails, mostly Michigan made. Finding the right pairing is easy when you want one of everything. We got the pitmaster platter, which is a little taste of everything, the brisket, pork, sausage. Woodpile sides are simply sensational with cornbread, mac and cheese, pepper jack mac, and roadside pit beans. Now we have two and three meat combos where you can pick your two meats and you get sides with it or three meats. You can dig into burnt ends or the Texas Trinity. Pulled pork or chicken sandwiches are a savory start or be bold. Behold, the namesake sandwich stacked so only a knife can hold it. The woodpile sandwich. It, it's a big one. It's got almost a whole pound of meat. It's got half a it's got half a sausage, quarter pound of brisket, quarter pound of pork, a slice of candy bacon. Woodpile desserts like seasonal cobblers and bread pudding with a scoop of local treat dreams ice cream. And this craft barbecue is kid tested, family approved. You know, barbecue and family just seem to go hand in hand. So um, and we've kind of brought that here to Woodpile. When you come in here, you're your family. Wow. Take a look at all this stuff. I am. Oh, I am. So good. Do you even think it, it looks good as a vegetarian? Oh, absolutely. And I can still appreciate the smell of great food. <laughs> exactly. I really can. Exactly. And they've got options for you as well. So let's take a look at what is going on here. We've got, we'll start with this one right here. Uh, this is the Carolina Pork Sammy. And you can Ooh. see they Ooh. definitely... Uh, they're not bashful with their serving size. Oh, no, they pile it up. Yeah. <laughs> Load it up. Yep. And then right here we have the two meat combo. This is pork and chicken, as you can see here. So all protein. Looks really good with some sides. Um, right here we have the brisket. Oh, my gosh. Look at that. Look at that. I know. <laughs> it's heavy. I know. That's a lot of food, <laughs> I'm telling is. you. And then next to that is the bread pudding, Ooh. which would be a 
fantastic dessert. Oh, Jason's Ooh. going in for the, for the whole. Right all right. Now. And then next to the bread pudding, if you want yeah. to take a look right there, we there do go. have, this is the pit master platter. So Ooh. just got a little bit of everything in there. Really a couple does. of sides, cornbread. Looks like the brisket on there too. Thank you. Definitely going to need a napkin. Uh, yeah. Here. I'm just going to start <laughs> oh, laying them out here. Stuff. All right, well, let's bring it back over here. This is the uh, brisket Reuben. So a little uh, spin on the Reuben you can see here it's with a side of mac and cheese. Ooh, can't go wrong. Oh, looks fantastic. Is that candied bacon? This is candied bacon, Jason. Wow. Might oh, I never. That down. <laughs> I was going to say, he's just walking away with that one. We didn't even need to give you a fork. No, we didn't. He's <laughs> it like an ice cream sandwich or something. Oh, Take a look at this, though. This is amazing. This is a huge platter. They call this mm. uh, the feast for four. So we got the family coming out. This is definitely a good thing. We've got chicken, cornbread, um, all the fixed things. And then I just really want to show this, Priya. What you would never one? eat that. No, I wouldn't. But... Vegetarian. but look at that. That is called the wood pile sammy with about every type of meat you can think of on there. Wow. Wow. And some beans? Yes. And All some right. beans on the oh, side. Good. Well, we do want to also let you know about the deal of the day. It's a little bit different. It's actually something very unique and incentive to go to Woodpile Barbecue. Shaq, they're going to donate 10% of all of their sales today to Operation Barbecue Relief. That's an organization. All right. Yeah. So you guys yeah. know what this is? Very good. It's amazing. It's an organization that helps feed hurricane victims in Florida and Texas. Woodpile is located in Clawson on Main Street, just south of 14 Mile, and it opens at 11 a.m. So so nice yeah. that they're helping out with you know, feeding people, obviously. You get some amazing food, and then you're also helping folks out who are still recovering. Yeah, and that's today things. only, that deal. Awesome. All right, well, I'm wow, digging into some great. of this. For this Tasty Tuesday segment and all the oh, others, yeah, <laughs> head on over to the click on, see it on four page, and click on Detroit.com. This is fantastic. And I, highly, I highly recommend eating brisket mm. with a napkin and mm. having the sauce just to put it right on the yeah. top like that. You're going to need, like, a bib. And these beans are kind of sweet. I like that. Oh, are we putting a bib on them? It's just, it's just <laughs> being nice. nice. Oh, your mic. Well, there we go. There you go. We'll, we'll help you. There. Oh, it's staying. <laughs> we'll be right back. It's fall. And we're following breaking news from Detroit this morning. That's where police are investigating a break in at the popular Northern Lights Lounge in New Center. It's unknown what was stolen at this time. Frazier Mayor Joseph Nichols and Councilman Matthew Hemmelberg are planning to pursue legal action after the city council voted to remove them from office. The council's decision comes after several sexual assault allegations made by Frazier City Hall employees. The trial against six people accused in the female genital mutilation investigation continues in court today. Later this morning, a pre-trial pre conference will be held at the U.S. District Court. The proceedings are scheduled to start at 11 a.m. President Trump is set to address the U.N. General Assembly for the first time. Mr. Trump is expected to urge nations to do their part in confronting the rogue regimes in North Korea and Iran. And all eyes will be on the Caribbean today as Hurricane Maria continues to move toward Puerto Rico. Overnight, Maria weakened slightly to a Category 4 after pounding the island of Dominica, but then strengthened, re-strengthened to a Category 5 monster. Maria is expected to make landfall in Puerto Rico tomorrow. And Paul, you've been tracking that, and uh, it's really another round for the folks who are still dealing with Irma. Absolutely, especially in the Virgin Islands there. This is a nasty, nasty scenario. Uh, we have a quiet start to our day here. Cloudy skies. There's a little shower in southern St. Clair County, but the rest of us are dry. So basically low to mid-60s right now and muggy as you head out the door. Showers and storms increase today with a high in the mid-70s. Kim? All right, thank you, Paul. We do have a little bit of trouble right now on the roads. We're looking at an accident over on eastbound I-696, right at Evergreen there. The left lane is blocked, so just give yourself a little bit of extra time. All right, thank you, Kim. Well, you're still eating, so Local <laughs> 4 News returns in 25 minutes with another update. The Today Show is next. I've been so, accused of worse. <laughs>